Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will read or display the data in Firebase real-time database. As this is a continuous series from previous video where I have shown how to store data in real-time database. So you can click on the i button to watch. Now coming back to this project, so we already stored the data in database. Now we are going to do is to retrieve the data from the database and display it in text view. You can display in recycler view or list view, anything, it's up to you, okay? Also, as I previously said, it's a client admin module. Means, create, update and delete are part of admin module, while read is a part of client module. Hence, we will create this project in client module. So, open the project. Quick recap. In the previous video, we already created client admin module, right? So this is admin where we have already created upload activity. And also we have connected Firebase CLTM database with both the modules. Okay. So in today's video, as I said, we will be creating read data in client side. So let's create it. First, let's do the prerequisite. So go to colors.xml Write the color name as green and hex code as 4FA853 And done! Then go to themes.xml Uncomment this line and write color as green Then add another item as color primary variant. Again add another item as Android status bar color. And then, then go to Gradle module app. Let me quickly refresh your memory that this is one project with two apps inside it, client and admin, right? So both the modules have their different files and folder and even the package name is different. So does the Gradle modules. But Gradle project is one for both of them. Only Gradle module is two. Okay, got it? So as we are dealing with client side, so I am in Gradle module app. Over here, write build features. And inside it, write view binding is equal to true. Then click on sync now. And done. Now come to drawable. So to make edit text look more fancy, we will create a green border around it. So to do that, right click on drawable, then new, and then drawable resource file. Write the name as green border and root element as shape. So let me quickly write it. And then, I have given the shape as rectangle, then green stroke, and lastly, the corner radius as 30 dp. And that's it. This is how it looks. Now to save your time in designing and also to make it look more appealing, I'll quickly copy paste the background image. And done. Close all the tabs. Now let's go to activity main.xml. So over here, we will be creating an edit text that will be for search, where you will write the vehicle number and in the text view, it will display the data. Simple, right? So the XML code is quite long. Hence, to save your time, I have given the source code in the description box. You can modify the code accordingly. All right, let me quickly write it. And then, see, I have used constraint layout as a parent then the background image, then inside it, I have created an edit text for search, whose ID is search vehicle number, 
then obviously a search button. Now there are a lot of nesting of layouts. So there is one linear layout and inside it two more linear layout. And then inside one of the linear layout we have two text view. One is for owner name and another one is where we will retrieve the owner name from the database. Then a separator. Again a linear layout and inside it two text view. One is for vehicle brand and another one is for read vehicle brand. Then again a separator. Similarly a linear layout and inside it two text view. One is for vehicle RTO and another one is for read vehicle RTO. And that's it. This is how it looks. Now let's go to mainactivity.kt. This is where we will retrieve the data from the database. So first let me quickly set a binding. And done. Then let me declare database reference. And done. Now we will create a read data function outside the on create and later call it inside the search button. Got it? So let me quickly write it first and then I'll explain you.
and done. Now see, we have declared a parameter as vehicle number because that is what we are going to take from user, right? Then I have initialized database reference and I have used the same path for reference that is vehicle information. Make sure you write the correct spelling, okay? Because this is basically your database name. And if you refer to wrong name, it will ultimately going to crash. The next path is child. That is vehicle number. If you remember in store data, first we have database name. That is vehicle information. Then inside it, a child has vehicle number. That's what it is referring to. Now, as we are retrieving the data from the database, we will use get method. To store data, we have used set value method. And to retrieve the data, we have used get method. Got it? Then we have used two methods that is add on success listener and add on failure listener. It's like if the data is successfully retrieved, then the below actions will be performed. Otherwise, if the data fails to retrieve, then in that case, we have used add on failure listener, which ultimately going to throw a toast as something went wrong. Now inside the add on success listener, it says if it exists. It is basically data snapshot that is our vehicle number that was taken at the time of search. Okay. So it says as if vehicle number exists, then extract it respective owner name, vehicle brand and vehicle audio by referring to its path. And value act as a get value method. Also make sure you write the correct spelling for path. Like the exact one that is present in the database. Once all of them are extracted, then throw a toast as results found. Then clear the text from search edit text. Now once we have retrieved all the values from the database, convert all of them to string. And then display it on their respective text view using text method. Easy, right? But what if somebody writes a wrong vehicle number at the time of search? Then simply throw a toast as vehicle number does not exist. Now our read data method is ready. Let's call it inside the search button. So first come inside the onCreate method. Then write binding dot search button dot set on click listener. And inside it take the input from the user through search edit text. So let me quickly write it. And done. Then I'll write if search vehicle number, that is basically the vehicle number given by the user is not empty, means user has written something. And in that case, we will call the read data method. And passing the argument as obviously the search vehicle number. Else means user has not written anything in search edit text. Then in that case, through a toast as please enter the vehicle number. Got it? And that's it. We are done with the coding. Now let's run the app. As I previously said, we have two modules, that is client and admin. Both are separate app and will run separately. As we have created retrieve data in client module, right? Hence, I will run the app that is a client module. This is how it looks. Now, I already have one data stored in the database. So I'll retrieve it, okay? So over here, I'll write the exact vehicle number in the search box. Now I click on search button and see owner name, vehicle brand and vehicle audio is retrieved successfully. Great, right? So make sure that you watch the next video where I will update and delete the data. Also for more updates, you can follow us on Instagram or join our Telegram group for background images. Link in the 
description box so yeah that is it for the video if you are new to this channel please consider subscribing to my channel and i'll see you in the next video